Hello Rockstars, my name is Christopher from Rag Wireless and welcome to the Wizgate Show. In today's video we are going to power up and access for the first time our Edge Light 2 LoRaWAN Gateway. If you don't know what I'm talking about, click this card to watch the first video of this series. After finding an appropriate location for our gateway, it is time to power it up and configure it for the first time. For the power supply there are two options. One is the include power adapter and the second one is to use a PoE cable with an injector since the device supports it. I will use the 12 volts power adapter for this example and as you can see, the gateway lights up the power LED indicator on the back. After a few seconds of waiting for the gateway to boot up, it will enter its default Wi-Fi access point mode, which means that you can find a Wi-Fi network called rag 7268 c the last four digits of the device MAC address. To access the gateway, connect to this network, no password is required. Then type 192.168.230.1 dot one on your favorite browser and you should see a login page. The username and password are both root. Once you are in, you will be requested to define a new login password and that's it. Now let's briefly overview the menus to know the different configurations and data that we can manage from here. After a correct login, the LoRaWAN statistics opens automatically. This page consists of several blocks where the user can see the overview of some metrics and basic information about the traffic of messages. Up here, we can also switch to overview, where the user can see information about the gateway model, firmware, WAN, and LAN interfaces. In addition, you can monitor the gateway performance and its packet traffic. By clicking on Wizgate, we unfold the left menu where we can find the LoRa network, diagnostics, settings, and extensions configuration submenus. Following the order, let's click on LoRa. It opens directly in configuration. Here we can define the work mode that we will be trying on future videos. Also, the log level so we can record the warning, notice, errors, and info events on logs. And finally, the frequency plan to be adjusted for your specific region. In the application tab, you can create applications and register end devices. This will just work if the gateway is in built-in network server working mode. In this mode, we can also add extender gateways to work with the LNS. The current gateway does not need to be added as the network server is working on it as a central gateway. In the overview tab, you can see information about the end devices and traffic going through the extender gateways and the central one. In the network menu, you can do modifications on the WAN and LAN interfaces. In WAN, you can manage the interfaces that the gateway uses for communicating with the internet and its priority. In LAN, you can see and edit information about the local area network. In the diagnostic menu, you can review the logs on the gateway and perform some checks. The system log records any event that happened. It's mainly used for debugging purposes with system information and actual data coming from end devices. The network utilities let you ping, trace, and NS lookup URLs or IP addresses. Let's jump to the settings menu. Here we can change our gateway's name, reboot it, create a backup or restart it from one, see the current version of the firmware and update it, browse for files as the log in the root directory and manage with DM integration and the firmware over the air feature. Finally, in the extensions menu, the user can install kind of skills by drag and drop them to here. As you can see, we have already installed one to customize the top LED of our gateway and its logo. In the next video, I will show you how to add your gateway to WizDM to manage it remotely. That's all for today, guys. Thanks for watching and don't hesitate to like, share and subscribe for more techy and interesting content like this. We will be uploading more videos soon, so see you another time.